Hi, I'm David with Portrait Displays. In this video, I'd like to discuss one of the most important things when choosing a colorimeter. There's long been a misconception that all colorimeters are created equal. Because of this, you may be tempted to purchase the one with the lowest cost and call it a day. After all, if all colorimeters are created equal, why wouldn't you? Heck, i do the same thing. But you also might have heard, you pay for what you get. Now there are many characteristics of measurement devices we could discuss, such as repeatability, measurement tolerances, and range. But all of those mean very little if your meter isn't optimized for the display technology you're measuring. So let's take a few minutes to dive into meter profiles. But I don't want to just discuss it. I'd like to demonstrate it for you. Today, I'm using our Portrait Displays C6 HDR5000 colorimeter and the Colorimetry Research CR300 spectroradiometer. We have both of these set up on the Sony A95L QD OLED. You may notice a few things. First, the C6 HDR5000 is centered on the display and the CR300 is set up slightly off center. I'm doing this so we can work quickly. However, in a perfect world, the C6 and the CR300 would measure exactly the same spot is measuring two different locations on a display may not take into account the slight changes in panel uniformity. Let's get started. I'm going to launch Calman on my computer. Today we're using Calman Studio. With Calman launched, I'm going to come up to the left corner here, click on the Calman icon, come over here to open workflow template, hover down to tools, and choose meter profiling. This is going to open up a workflow that allows us to create a meter profile. But instead of creating a meter profile, I'm going to use this workflow to compare my meter profile. Let's click on profile meters. And at this stage, Calman would like you to connect to your hardware. We have two meters we need to connect to, the Portrait C6 and the CR300. So let's press find meter. My CR300 is on COM7, so I'm going to leave that set to COM7. I've got all meters except those listed below checked and the color measure research checked. Let's press search. If we come up to the top right hand corner, you'll notice we've connected to the portrait displays C6 HDR5000. And if we click here on the meters, we've also connected to the color measure research CR300. I can easily toggle these here in the menu on the top right. I'm going to select the color measure research CR300. And now let's come down to find source. And today we're using the Portrait Displays G1 Pattern Generator. So I'm going to come to Manufacturer, choose Portrait Displays, come down to G1 for the model, and you'll notice Calman has found the G1 on the network. So we'll click on the Portrait G1 and press Connect. We've now connected to both our meters and the Portrait Displays G1 Pattern Generator. Let's come back to Calman and press Next. Now at this page of the workflow, it's asking us for our reference meter data. For our reference meter, we're going to use the Color Metry Research CR300. We already have that selected here in the top right, so we'll come down to the bottom right and we'll press Read Series. Kalman's going to put up a patch, take a reading, and plot the data for white, red, green, and blue. Okay, our reference meter is now finished collecting its data. So let's come to the bottom right and press next. On this page of the workflow, it's asking us to create a meter profile. But we're not going to create a meter profile. We're going to skip this and press next. Now we're going to perform our profile validation. So let's come up to the top right and let's change from our CR300 over to the C6 HDR5000. Now we're measuring a Sony A95L today, which is a quantum dot OLED. So I'm going to come over to meter mode here in Calman, and I'm going to want to make sure I've chosen the best meter mode for the task at hand. And of course, we've already kind of have that selected, and that's the Quantum.OLED 2023. So with our meter profile loaded on the C6 HDR5000, we're now going to hit read series in the bottom right and allow that to perform its measurement. Okay, the profile validation has completed. Now we want to compare our two meters and see how they performed. Let's come to the bottom right and press next. On this page, you'll notice we now have our reference to profile meter readings with our reference meter here on the top left and the profile meter on the bottom left. You'll notice we have X, Y, and big Y, or luminance data, going across from left to right with the reference meter on the top and the 
profile meter on the bottom. Of course, we haven't profiled the C6 HDR5000. We're comparing the built-in profile that ships with every C6 HDR5000 to the Color Imager Research CR300. So let's take a look at how that came out. I'm going to come over here to the left and click on white for both meters. That's going to load the white value data that we measured before. If we look at our X, we've got 0 0.3147, 0 0.3146. That's a difference of 0 0.0001. Considering the color imagery research has a plus or minus tolerance of 0 0.0015, we're well within the tolerance of the repeatability of our reference meter when we compare the C6 and the CR300. That's an excellent result. If we come over here and we look at Y, we've got 0 0.3281, 0 0.3294 a difference of 0 0.0013, still within that 0 0.0015 plus or minus tolerance. In fact, if we were to take the worst case with the CR300, we could have as much as 0 0.003, considering one meter could be all the way off on the right and the other meter could all be off on the left. Now let's take a look at white, our luminance value. We have 107.52 candelas per meter squared, and 108.26 candela per meter squared. That's a difference of about 0.74. We're still within a single nit. Now, if you look here at the Delta E2000 metric, that's actually not comparing the Delta E2000 between the two probes. It's comparing the Delta E2000 of each probe against the target we have in Calman. So let's not take a look at that with too much granularity, as we really want to compare these X, Y, and Y values to see how close this really is. Let's click on the red and take another look at these XYY values. Here, we've got an X value of 0.652 from our reference meter and 0.6519 from the C6 HDR5000. That's a difference of 0 0.0001. Once again, very, very tight match, and we're not even measuring the same spot on the screen. We're measuring two different spots, and we also have a lot of light in this room, so I was a little concerned about that since the CR300 is just ever so slightly not touching the glass here, whilst the C6 is sitting directly on top. Let's look at that Y for red. We've got 0.325 and 0.3253. Again, a 0 0.0003, well within the tolerance of the two meters. And looking at that large Y, we've got 21.7 and 21.49, a difference of about 0.21 nits, still well within the tolerances of these two meters. Now let's take a look at green. X, 0.2945 from the CR300, X, 0.2974 from the C6 HDR5000, a difference of about 0.0029. If we look at Y, 0.617, 0.616 a difference of 0 0.001. Again, still within the tolerance of the CR300 plus or minus 0 0.0015. Now let's take it that luminous value, that large Y. 76.73 and 77.3. A difference of about 0.57 nits. Very, very, very close. Lastly, let's now take a look at blue. We're gonna click on blue in that top left corner. We're gonna go down and change the C6 HDR5000 to blue. And let's take a look at that X. 0.1485 and 0.1484. Again, a difference of 0 0.0001. Very, very close. This is well within meter repeatability of both meters and uh, what we would expect to see. Looking at Y at 0 0.0538 and Y at 0.0559, it's about a difference of 0 0.0021. Again, very, very close. And looking at that large Y, we've got a knit level of 6.9 on the CR300 and 7.15 on the C6 HDR5000, a difference of about 0.25 nits. Both meters, again, measuring very, very close, well within the repeatability expectations of the CR300. And you can see that the C6 HDR5000 is providing similar results to what you would expect to see from this CR300, which is close to a $20,000 reference spectroradiometer. But you know what? It's easy for me to show you what happens when you have a good meter profile profile and a good spectroradiometer. But what happens when you buy a meter that might not have the profile for your particular display? Well, let's take a look. I'm going to take the C6 HDR5000 and I'm now going to switch it off the profile for the Sony A95L, this 2023 Quantum Dot OLED profile, and I'm going to choose another profile. Maybe I'm just choosing the factory profile that happens to come with the meter, the factory XYZ profile. We choose the factory XYZ profile, and I'm going to come over here to target meter data. 
So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna redo that profile validation. I'm gonna come up here to history one, right click it, hit clear tab data, press okay. We've now re erased the profile validation we had before. So now let's come down to the bottom right and hit read series. Okay, we've now created a profile validation with the factory XYZ data. So let's press next and let's compare that data. Let's come over to white and white. Now let's take a look at our values. X from the CR300 is 0.3147 and X from the C6HDR5000 is 0.3102. We've now increased our error to 0.0045. Now keep in mind the CR300 has a plus or minus 0.015 tolerance. So even if we take the worst case scenario of 0.003, we're still outside of that meter tolerance. So we're no longer getting that repeatability and that expectation that we might get from a reference spectroradiometer such as the CR300 with the C6HDR5000. Let's move over to the Y. 0.3281, 0.3341. We're actually now getting a difference of 0 0.006 between the two meters. That means that you might actually have a couple different clicks if you were adjusting, so let's say, green gain. You might end up maybe two or three clicks different, maybe even four clicks different than what you would get with the reference device when using this meter profile on the C6HDR5000. Now, if the points to calibrate your display to a known standard, why would you use a meter profile that might not be optimized for the display? You're only going to get some errors. The more unoptimized your meter profile is for your particular display, the more error you may have. Let's keep going here for a moment. We're now looking at the Y value. 107.52 on the CR300 and 105.39 on the C6 HDR5000. We've now started to increase the error by more than two nits. Let's just take a quick look at the red, the green, and the blue. We don't have to go through it too detailed. We look at red, X, 0.652, X on the C6HR5000, 0.6458. We're now starting to get errors all the way to the second decimal point. This is getting pretty large as we start to work through this. Now let's look at red on Y, 0.325, 0 0.337. Once again, our errors are starting to get pretty large. And let's look at that large Y, 21.7, 22.08. Not too bad there, but we do have some significant errors on the X and Y when you're trying to calibrate to a known target. Well, let's look at green. Here we are on the X, 0 0.2945, 0 0.2938. Actually, not too bad on the green there with X. Y, 0 0.617, 0 0.6141. Not too bad there. We're still pretty much at that tolerance, right? That's just above that 0 0.003 that we were talking about with that uh, plus or minus on the CR300. We're just outside that at 0 0.0031, so we're pretty close. We could maybe get away with that. Again, we have lights in the room. We've got, you know, some variabilities here, so we don't want to get down to that, you know, 0 0001 here in this kind of environment, but, you know, I I'd give it that. And then let's look at our green Y, 76.73, 78.91. Again, we're about two nits off. Let's move over to blue, 1485, 1481, not too bad. Y, 0 0.538, 0 0.0565. Again, borderline for us. And then blue Y, 6.9, 7.27. Again, not too terrible there, but there were a couple, as you could see, with the red, with the green, and even the white, where we had some errors that might not be acceptable. Let's take a look at just another profile. That was the factory XYZ profile, but let's take a look at another profile that might be generic. Let's just go over to an OLED RGB profile that we have here. Now, I actually don't know off the top of my head what display we were measuring when we made the generic OLED RGB profile. So this is gonna be just as much of a surprise to me as it is you. We switch back to the target meter data page. I'm going to once again, clear the tab data, and I'm gonna hit read series. Now, as you can see, when you have the right meter profile, the C6 HDR5000 can perform as well as some reference meters out there in the market. What you'll notice though is many of our competitors don't come with many meter profiles. The C6 HDR5000 comes with over 80 meter profiles optimized for the various displays that we find our customers use the most. And we're adding meter profiles all the time. 
the meter profiles are updated to the meter through Cowman. So you don't have to send your meter in, you don't have to worry about anything. We take care of it for you right in the background. With our competitors though, they may not actually update the meter profiles. You might get three, four, five, maybe even 10 meter profiles at the start. Those meter profiles are often very generic and maybe not optimized for your particular display. That might lead to more error, and why would you want that error when you're spending the money to try and get the best calibration possible? Once again, I've chosen an OLED RGB profile. Now, why did I do that? Well, this is a Quantum.OLED, a Sony nd 5 l and it is an RGB-based OLED. You may find profiles in the C6HDR5000 optimized for a WRGB OLED, such as those made by LG Display and you will want to use one of those profiles for that technology. It wouldn't really be fair for me to choose one of those profiles and try to measure the quantum dot OLED because we would be getting much, much larger errors when trying to use a profile for one type of technology for yet another type of technology. So let's take a look at what this OLED RGB profile did here with the Sony A95L. So if we click on white for both, we notice that the CR300 once again has that 0.3147 on the X, but we're now getting 0.3101. So we have an error of 0.0046. Again, we're outside of that tolerance of the CR300. So we're no longer within a reference range of that CR300 if we really wanted to be. We look at Y, 0.3281, 0.3334. Once again, we're outside of that 0.003 tolerance I'd really like to be in. Looking at white, 107.52, 110.21. About a three nit difference. Not the end of the world, but certainly not reference. Let's come back now and look at red. Click on red, click on red again. Here we are looking at red, 0 0.652, 0 0.6451. A difference of about 0 0.0069. Again, well outside of that 0 0.003 that we'd like. And by the way, remember, this is an OLED RGB profile, which means we've made this on a display that is an OLED RGB display. So it's very easy for someone else to make a profile saying this is an OLED RGB profile. But if you don't know what they made that profile on, you don't know how accurate that's actually gonna be on your particular OLED RGB. After all, there are many RGB OLEDs that are out there. This one happens to be a quantum dot OLED, but the Sony BVM X300 was also an RGB OLED that didn't use quantum dots. Was this made on a Sony BVM X300? Was it made on a quantum dot OLED? Based on these results, I would argue it's not made on a quantum dot OLED, but it could also be made on many different RGB OLEDs that are out there on the market. Let's continue. Let's look at why. 0.325. 0.3378. So if you're out there calibrating, this is a difference of over 0.01. That's something that you're absolutely going to notice when you finish a calibration. If you were to take a calibration of two of these monitors, one using the c 6 hdr 5000 in this OLED RGB profile, which is clearly not right for this monitor, you would absolutely see a difference between the green when you visually look at this. Now let's take a look at that red. Y21.7 and Y22.29. Again, very close on the Y. It's not always gonna be a singular metric that you're gonna find when a profile is not optimized for the display. Some might be pretty close, some might be pretty far off. But once you start getting those that are pretty far off, it's gonna change how your color gamut maps across the board, and you're gonna find that error scales throughout your image. Let's take another quick look at the green. 2945 and 294, not bad. 617 and 6132, again, not too terrible, right at the border there. 76.73 and 79, eh, a little bit much on that Y. Let's take a look at that blue. 1485, 1482, hey, not too bad. 0 0.0538, 0 0.0568, again, pretty close. Remember, we're in that 0 0.003. 6.9 and 7.38, again, not too terrible there. So there are some areas you saw, even in the zone profile, where we had significant error and some where we didn't have so much error. So when you're choosing a colorimeter, it's very important to know what you're trying to calibrate. What display are you trying to calibrate? What are you trying to look at? Once you decide what kind of displays you're gonna be calibrating, I urge you to choose the best colorimeter that has meter profiles optimized for your workflow. You're gonna get the best results and you're gonna get the most consistency and you're gonna get results that compare to some of these more expensive spectral radiometers that are on the market that people like myself might use when I'm out professionally calibrating monitors. I hope you enjoyed our video. We'll see you on the next one. Thank you.